So I finally got into the studio, the HP Omen 16, the 2022 model. The last time I reviewed an Omen product was two years ago, okay? And the 16 inch version is literally a replica of the 15 inch model, except a bit bigger. They did change some of the things like the location of the ports, but unfortunately, some of the things I didn't like about the 15 are still present on the 16. For example, when you press down on this lid, it's still very soft. It literally feels like you're pressing on a wet diaper. It's not made out of metal. There's a little bit of metal bits around the sides, but at the end of the day, this is a mostly plastic laptop. It's using a brushed plastic, and when you press down, you can see it moving down, but you're also gonna get fingerprints, which is standard with any black laptop. It's 5.16 pounds, so it's not super light, but it's light enough that it's easy to carry. And most of the ports have been moved to the back so that you can keep your table clean if you connect cables to this. You have two type C ports, which are not Thunderbolt. These go up to 10 gigabits per second, but they also support display 1.4. You have an HDMI port, which supports 2.1. Your power connector, which is a 240 watt power brick. And then on the left-hand side, you have a USB-A port, RJ45, audio jack, SD card slot, and then on the right hand side, you have two more USB-A ports, which go up to five gigabits per second. Now, a lot of you complained about this little gap between the display and the bottom with the Omen 15 review I did, and I said it's not a big deal. And today, I still think it's not a big deal. They have rubber stoppers at the bottom so it doesn't crack, and the screen is plastic, so I don't think it will. And even the front of it is completely closed. This has a couple of advantages, being the fact that if you use this laptop closed, connected to a display, this gap just provides better airflow. Now, the second flaw they kept with this laptop is the display. It is super duper wobbly like you can place it all the way back this is the furthest it goes which is fine it's pretty standard but like it just it just flops everywhere and because this is a 16 inch display it flops a bit more than the old 15 inch version all they had to do was put slightly better hinges on this and it would stay in place a bit easier the keyboard doesn't have rgb but there might be versions that do support it it's a white backlight with different levels to choose from it has a massive, and I mean massive touchpad, which feels pretty good to use. You know, it's not gonna beat out a MacBook Pro 13, but pretty good for a gaming laptop. The actual typing experience is fine, but the keys are very mushy. Like when you press down on this keyboard deck, it kind of just sinks in. And that's not something you want on a gaming laptop. Now the bottom bezel is quite chunky, but the sides are thin. It does have a 720p webcam and it's not that great. There is no Windows Hello to log you in with your face and there is no fingerprint scanner either. The display is pretty good. You know, it has good color gamut, it has good color accuracy, and the screen brightness is more than acceptable. And because it's 144 hertz, I think that's a good place to be for a RTX 3060, which is what they're using inside of here. In fact, the color accuracy is more than capable if you plan on doing any sort of design work. Now that show you just saw during my display test is called The Newsreader, an amazing show by the way, but it's only available through BBC's iPlayer, which happens to be region locked. That's why I wanna to mention today's partner, NordVPN. With one click, I was able to connect to a server in the UK and gain access to all the content on BBC. You can do this from anywhere in the world with no bandwidth throttling or restrictions. The best part is all the traffic is encrypted so your internet provider can't slow down your streaming speeds. There's over 5,400 plus servers in 59 countries so that you'll always be able to find the best location for the fastest speeds. NordVPN works on up to six devices on every major platform, including Linux. Go to nordvpn.com slash monas to get a two year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. So the speakers are on the bottom of the laptop and they don't sound that great, even though there's a Bang & Olufsen label slapped onto the deck of the keyboard. Now this is also the very first Ryzen 7 6800H processor I've tested this year, and they paired it with 16 gigabytes of RAM, RTX 3060 that can boost up to 140 watts, that's with dynamic boost, and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. The CPU performance is very similar to the Ryzen 9 6900HS. This is a full H processor, so there's more power being pushed to the CPU. It's not as fast as an i7 12700H, but it's in line for the 6000 series of AMD processors. If you're running creative applications on this thing, it performs very well, but if you want the best experience, you're still better off going with Intel. If you're buying this for gaming, the best way to describe the performance is much better than the Zephyrus G15, but not as fast as the Legion 5i Pro. Even with the 1920, 
by 1200 display, which is push, pushing more pixels, you still get a tiny bit more performance on the Legion 5i Pro compared to the Omen 16. Fan noise was a bit disappointing. It does get up to 55 decibels, which is not the bad part. That's pretty standard for a gaming laptop, but I actually heard some coil whine and it was very present when the fans kick in. That's something I don't like to hear on most laptops. Heat management is good. The deck of the keyboard never got too hot and the CPU temps never stayed in the high 90s, which I find to be the case on other AMD laptops released this year. This one did a better job with the thermals. But the one thing that truly impressed me was the battery life. Like this has an 83 watt hour battery, so it's not the biggest I've seen in a laptop, but I got nine hours and 30 minutes before needing to charge, which is really good for a gaming laptop this size. You can upgrade the drive on the right hand side, but there's also an extra slot on the left. You have two slots for RAM. It's using rank 16, which is kind of unfortunate, but you can always swap it out for something better. It is DDR5. You have two fans, lots of copper running across the middle. The only downfall is they're using a Wi-Fi 6 card instead of Wi-Fi 6E. So here's the thing, performance, battery life is all fantastic on this laptop, even upgradability. The only thing I wish they fixed were all the little things that I had complaints about with the previous Omen 15. We're just gonna have to wait for a body redesign for HP to go in and actually do that. Now, do I think this is the worst gaming laptop on the market? No, it's solid, it performs very well. There's just a lot of little things that might irk you if you purchase this. It is 1550, which is not a bad price, but I just checked Best Buy, and there's the i7 Intel version of this on sale right now now for $13.50 instead. So if you're interested in checking that out, I'll place a link to it down below. But yeah, that wraps up my review of the HP Omen 16. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.